What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. I think I got this problem that we have right here figured out for the most part. Being having an issue with my white fox body, we went to Ford Takeover 2022 at a different track and we confirmed it. It's time to try to rectify that today. Stick around and if you enjoyed this content and it helped you, give me a big thumbs up and a comment below. Let's get into it. hasn't been driving straight for a while got to put some parts on it now as most of you guys know we uh just got back from ford takeover and we've been having a uh you know we had a good time we had a blast on there meeting people you know collaborating with other youtubers and you know just being able to have fun and cruise in and go to the track and pretty much all that stuff all combined so one of the issues that i had with the white fox bodies you guys already know is you know we're steering all over the damn track and we figured out at least my Good friend Mike helped me figure out that you probably need a bum steer kit, Dan. And by probably, he means hell yes, I do. Look how crooked that is. I'm gonna have to bring that space down quite a bit. So we're gonna get the uh, the front wheels off the uh, the old white fox here, and we're gonna start breaking the uh, the, the tie rods loose. And uh, I'm gonna show you the the, the uh, bum steer kit that I got. Uh, might be something you guys might be interested in if you need to get it yourself at another day. Um, I bought the QA1 one. We'll go through it. We'll check it out. Um, it shouldn't be a hard thing to do. I'm going to try to align it myself because I don't have time to get an alignment between now and Saturday for some reason. Um, but you know what? I've aligned these cars for years. I eyed them in for the most part. And this is just a tow thing. So, you know, I'll take a little bit of video before and after. <clears throat> see how close. I mean, as long as we get pretty close, I'll get it up on the, on, on the rack. And, and we'll, you know, we'll, we'll get the tires straight. It won't be an issue. <laughs> actually get the wheels as straight as possible and we're gonna eye this thing in I think it'll be just fine you know and then we'll end up getting a uh, an alignment schedule I'll come in here and we'll get the you know I've done this a number of years with other Fox bodies so we'll get it as straight as possible usually the, the the tire just goes along with the body line right here in the door you don't look in front here because the fender has a flare to it you know we'll be able to eye most of this in by ourselves all right, so the bump steer kit that I actually chose to use is the uh, QA1. There's a part number, but for SN95s, but it should work just fine since it's an SN95 spindle with VAX 104. It's hot out here in Ohio right now. All right, guys, so what I have here is the QA1 um, bump steer. I like QA1. It's QA, QA1 products is what I pretty much run on my white car. So cousin Paul's getting the white car ready to go up in the air. Uh, we're gonna get these wheels cracked loose and we are going to show you the directions real quick. Actually, to be honest with you guys, the bump steer kit is really not that hard to put on. You know, this rod just pretty much takes the uh, place of a ball joint and you got these sleeves here that are left and right hand. And it's really very simple to do. It's really not that hard. I ended up watching a couple videos. I did cheat a little bit. You know, when you need to find some information, you go to YouTube, go to Google. You want to make the bump steer level to the ground, and you can also make it level to your control arms. You can see, like I showed you earlier, how crooked my bump steer is, and that's actually quite dangerous. Let me get this thing uh, broke loose, put you on a little time lapse. We're going to get the car up in the air. Uh, this shouldn't take too long. So. I got no love for the fakeness. If you want to play tough and want to hate this, I'll always show up. I don't ever slow up, no I don't take shit. I got no love for the fakeness If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this I'll always show up and make a statement I don't ever slow up, no I don't take shit. I got no love for the fakeness If you wanna play tough and wanna All right, so the way that the uh, video was showing is that my tie rod end had to be level with my control arm. So we definitely have to come down quite a bit on this. So we're gonna go ahead and get this out. We, we definitely need a couple spacers which we know putting a number of spacers there is probably a good uh, good inch that needs to be 
um, bump steered. These two little jam nuts can only go on each spherical end here. So what's gonna end up happening is I'm gonna put this up into the spindle and we're gonna space it out with the spacers here. You know, we'll start with like that. You know, that's a good inch. That's a good, that's a good inch or close to seven eighths. So we can start with something like this and work our way, make any adjustments we might need on a later, on a later date. It'd be like, it'd be something like this. Come through the top, the spindle, and obviously this is the jam nut for that. And that's about all she wrote. You know, these are obviously are for one for each side. This is pretty much all, this is it. You got to figure out your bumps to your size and then, you know, I'll stick all the extra spacers underneath here as like a washer. You know what I mean? But we, before we install it all, we got to figure out length to the middle. So this shows five and three, maybe five and a quarter. <coughs> That's where it would be. We're going to end up popping this cotter pin out and stuff and we'll install the arm and we'll take this off and measure it. So we're going to want to measure how long the tie rod is. We're going to do that back nut off. I got to get a new boot. You see this? Mm-hmm. All right, so what you have to do here is we have to measure. So I'm getting like a six, I can be getting like a five and seven eighths for our center point. So we got to come out the five and seven eighths, which is what we can do right now. Got about that right there. So we can go over here and test our theory. See how long it is. one way to do it, ain't it? Wait up. Put over top of the, the ball joint itself. It's damn near close. Bring this nut up, tighten it a little bit with our fingers, and not move it. So that's what we're gonna, so that's what we're gonna actually go with. I'm gonna take this tie rod off. All right, guys, well, it looks like I'm gonna have to uh, take a break and go back to Summit Racing. One of the problems that I had that I completely forgot was I needed the 104M, which is the manual steering rack. That's basically what I run in my white car, so the threads for the, uh, the, the tie rod end does not fit. It'd be a nice time to grab another boot while I'm at it for my QA1, but you know, those are the things that we have to deal with. So I'm gonna run down there and I'll continue this video on another day, which will be for you in a few seconds. Won't be a big deal, but uh, yeah, we gotta pay attention to these part numbers. Apparently I did not, so. We got some rotors, remember from dad's car that we gotta return. So there's a couple things we gotta return. We'll grab us a 104M kit and I'll probably end up buying the Fox body kit anyways too for uh, the black car. Cause you know, the black car's probably got a bump steer problem too. I'm imagining, I know it does. So we'll grab another kit while we're there. See you guys soon. Yep, we definitely have a bump steer issue on the black car too. Look at that. It's pretty level with the uh, the control arm though, but I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be level with the ground. Hmm. It's not as bad as the white car. Hi guys, so without further ado, it has been a trying last two days to try to get this video shot for you guys. But I finally got back to the shop with the proper parts that we need to install. Now, I'm just gonna go ahead and show you this stuff right now. We'll get right back into working. I ended up buying the 102 and the 104 kit M because this is for the manual rack that I needed. I think this is the one I need. But I ended up buying a 102, like I said, for the Black Fox in case I need it. We ended up buying the uh, QA1 or the Flaming River Bellows, because I know you, I told you, know, we had that one that we had to replace, it looks terrible. <clears throat> and another fuel line gauge so we can run our fuel line. And the biggest deal I got, these were, even though they're December, 2023, I got a set of G-Force racing belts for like 50 bucks. So this is what I've been doing the last two days, running back and forth the summit to make sure I got the right parts to actually finish this video. So these would be kind of nice for the black car, even though I don't race it much. You know, it makes enough horsepower that I should probably put a set of belts in anyway. So let's get back over to the shop and we'll, uh, you know, it shouldn't take too long to get this bump steer kit on. I think the, the 104M, the SN95 one with the, uh, it should work. So 
looks like I got the uh, the right sleeve this time for the manual rack. Looks like we're uh, we're good to go there. <clears throat> I'm glad I didn't force that on last time and actually looked at the instructions to see what the hell was going on. But again, I got the bellows. I'm gonna replace that one. The other side's fine. <clears throat> but uh, we're gonna go ahead and get this set up, center that uh, ball joint up, and I'm gonna make it exactly as long as this ball joint. And if I did it right on the other side, I, I get rid of the lock nut or I take the jam nut loose, but let it stay, you know, keep it in the exact position, maybe mark it with a marker and then count the number of spins that comes off that tie rod over there. And if this is the same length as the tie rod, all I gotta do is count the number of spins that go back on, lock it in place, and it should be close when it comes to um, the alignment or whatever. Probably gonna need to make a couple adjustments, so I'm gonna have to roll it around, and I'll have these tools with me tomorrow at the track. But uh, it's it's bump steer or bump the wall. It's pretty much my choice at this point. And if I can get this thing to go straight and, and, and be safe, I can start no-lift shifting it, instead of being all over the damn track all the time. <laughs> Okay, so it's my bump steer. You can see where we've gotten to here. Uh, I, this isn't adjusted yet, and I put the new bellow on, but I got the rod in here, and this is where the little shims go. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with an inch or three quarters of an inch. I think that's an inch right here. My bump steer was pretty far off. So, you know, my buddy Mike's like, dude, you gotta roll with at least, you know, three quarters of an inch. So we're gonna start with that. And we're gonna put the other spacers. We're gonna bring the stuff to the track and we're gonna bring the other spacers. We're gonna have them bolted on underneath. So it'll bring the, uh, the bump steer should be sitting about straight level, immediate center or whatever they call it. So I think that's what we're gonna go with right there for now. Might have to mess with these shims a little bit, but I got these all tight, uh, torqued to 50 foot pounds. We're gonna start with that. We're gonna get the wheel on and I'm gonna be able to make an adjustment. I mean, naturally I'll be able to bring this in or out. a bigger pain in the than I had thought it would be, especially with the bellows. I just didn't want to go on the lip, but I think we got uh, a good start here with our bump steer. I'll be able to adjust this more as I go, but what we're going to do is end up putting the wheels on and seeing where we are when we get down on the ground here. So, I mean, it's not going to be right until I actually drive it and let the car settle, of course, but we'll get it close with the body line. Main thing is I want to see where the, uh, the uh, QE1 sits. So. about as far as you're gonna go with that bump steer we pretty much put every spacer down minus the really small one which i'm gonna use as like a washer with the nut so this is maxed out i got i got the bump steer maxed out i already think it looks a lot better on the last adjustment but we made about another quarter inch adjustment so we're gonna bring the car back down I'm not worried about steering wheel right now uh, like i said this car is gonna be in for an alignment very very soon but i got the bump steer set let's bring it down this is still a little off. If anything, the tire's got to go in a little bit compared to the body line. It's kind of hard to see that in the camera. The nice thing is, is these are really easy and you could turn them by hand right there in the driveway. Let's get under here and check to see how close we are now. It's a hell of a lot better than what it was. Guys, if you guys, you guys enjoy this stuff, you enjoy the channel, check out that join button below. Uh, check out the thanks button uh, if you want to donate to the channel. But outside of that, I just appreciate you watching. It's a long video. Learn something very important, you know, bump steer or bump the wall. I had to make a choice. You know, it's a wild horse, man. And if I had a little bit of a steering uh, correction, it might not have been as bad. Safety first, boys. Thanks a lot. See you soon in the next video. Have a nice night.